when we go home with nothing, um, which defeats their entire thing on you know creating a, a, a protecting women. And second of all, they're brushing sexual harassment in this own house under the rug. No one's saying anything about it. And I'm sick and tired of this hypocrisy. And I'm going to go home and tell my constituents that this is this is this session has been one in the three years that I've been here has been the most disappointing session. And I'm 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 just. I can't, I have nothing else to say other than I'm just so disappointed in this house and that the way that they've behaved and the way that they've acted and then to stand next to speaker yesterday acting as if he's a hero, claiming that they've achieved something historic when they're actually going home achieving nothing because they don't want to vote on these bills separately. And that's a real shame because, you know, we have child, uh, child um, prostitution, human trafficking, we have um, sexual harassment, we have housing discrimination, so many important issues that we can take up today to protect women, but they're going to throw it all out the window because they're set a 10th point that we cannot all agree on in both houses with the governor. So there's not really a way to reconcile, you know, if, if the assembly passes that full, the full bill and then these individual bills are voted on. There's no real way to be Put done. all 10 bills separately <laughs> on the floor. That's the thing we need on the um, 10 separate bills would have to be introduced in our house when we have them. And the Senate would have to introduce the 10 point plan, which, from my understanding, is not. So at this point, there is no way to reconcile it unless the Speaker brings forward those 10 individual pieces of legislation, which he can still do. We are still in session. Uh, you know, we can still do that. And like I said, we've got everyone on board except for one group. Who's just here. I mean, what I can say is, look at this strategically. Wouldn't it be smarter to bring all 10 pieces of legislation to the floor for us to vote on? and then put the pressure on the Senate to bring the 10th piece to the floor and have everyone in the Senate vote on it? Why isn't that a strategy that they're considering so that we actually get something done for the women of this state? Whether you agree or disagree on the abortion issue, let's bring it to the floor for a vote. Why, it's why, simple as that. Why do we have to run this house like it's a dictatorship, that we can't have a democracy and vote on each piece of legislation separately? Why can't we just debate and discuss each one? We're not saying don't bring the abortion piece. We're just saying it bring it separately and allow it to be debated and voted on on its merits. And that is what a democracy is. I don't know what they're so afraid of. Another point that I want to bring up is it seems every time in Albany that there's an issue, a scandal, you know, drama continues. I'm pro-life. It seems abortion issue comes to the floor. It almost feels like it's an issue that we bring out, we don't bring out, the speaker brings to the floor just to say this is an issue we want to see where women stand. And if we go back for 10 years, I can promise you, any time there has been any kind of indictments and scandal, you will see an issue regarding women and the, that will, bill will come to the floor. I almost feel like it's, it's an insult to women here in the state of New York that this is how we choose to do politics here in New York State with issues that we should be talking about, sexual harassment, you know, the workplace environment. This is a man's world. We have very strong women who are elected to the New York State Assembly. They should be doing their job. They should not be so afraid of one man who rules this chamber. It's really a disgrace. And today's one of those days that I'm ashamed, really, to be a member of the New York State Assembly.